Okay, as always, I am a little confused if I am live or not. So let's check if the sound is good. I hope you tell me. Uh, I think I should open open my YouTube myself, but hmm, I'm not sure if anyone is even here. Not sure. I have done it 100 times. Why is it every time so confusing? So confusing. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Here I am. Okay, okay. So, welcome, welcome. I'm just doing it for the first time from this um, new YouTube studio, so it's kind of confusing. And, okay, I'll try to start. If you say the sound is good, what is not good is uh, my right eye kind of blurry. <laughs> Don't see, don't see properly. So today, actually, before we even start, let me make myself looking a little bit bigger for you. So today we are reading this wonderful book. Again, if you are on my email list, please check your email right now because this PDF is worth having. It's one of the most wonderful illustrations I have seen in my life. They are just so incredibly beautiful. It's Russian artist Maria Pavlova. And uh, you see, I'm still in the New Year Christmas mood. So we're going to read this New Year book. And uh, yeah, just look at that. Just look at that. We're getting there. And it's painted like in with brush. It's not some cheap kind of illustrations. So, we'll be here another hour. This is not like schmack. This is more advanced, but it's totally worth trying. I'm going to translate everything, so don't worry if you don't understand. Um, okay, so, unfortunately for Europeans, it's uh, very late there but nothing can be done i'm not sure how to do it properly let me let me check what's the better way to to read that because i'm trying to trying to turn the pages so i can also see your your messages at the same time Maybe I should just try watching myself from the phone or something. Not sure about that. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, yeah, let me open my own. Because I just don't see you. I don't see the chat when this is on the screen. So, yeah, it's... I don't see the chat when this is on the screen. I guess you are seeing me in some delay. Yeah, let me open the chat somewhere. I'm sorry for this. It's just oh, very confusing today. So, Happy New Year, everyone. I'm really happy to see you. And belated. So, we start reading. I hope you see me on the screen. The text is on the left. But again, if you have small screen, open the PDF from the uh, email or from the Telegram chat. PDF is there. So I'll be grateful if somebody gives a link in the chat uh, or just search for Real Russian Club. Okay, now let's let's do it. Вот и вечер скоро. Грустно. Мандарин лениво. Потяну и начал умываться. 
Подоконник был любимым местом рыжего кота. На фоне затянутого серой дымкой города мандарин смотрелся особенно эффектно. Pretty challenging, huh? Not like schmack at all. So let me translate it to you. Uh, it all starts with the speech of this red cat. And he says, the evening is coming soon. Вот и вечер скоро. Вечер, evening, скоро, soon. Then they play around with sounds a little bit. Грустно. So they imitate the purring cat sound. Грустно means sad. Rrr, purring sound of a cat. Грустно. Мандарин, this is the name of the cat, tangerine. So in Russian, tangerine is mandarin. Mandarin. Let me put my phone with the chat here. Мандарин. Лениво. Lazy. Lazy. Oh, потянулся. Stretched himself. Потянулся. И начал умываться. Умываться means to wash your face. Or cats like looking in, just doing it with their paws. Yeah, умываться. Начал умываться. So, tangerine cat lazily stretched and began washing his face. Лениво потянулся и начал умываться. Подоконник был любимым местом. Подоконник is the window, window sill or window seat. I don't remember it in English. So this is this place near the window, the one that he sits at, at the picture. Подоконник. It comes from two words, под and окно. Literally means under the window. So this is the place, this window sill. Thank you, Mike. Подоконник. Подоконник. So here we have passive Oh, no, it's not passive voice. Yeah, no, no, no. So, подоконник был, instrumental case, любимым местом. This windowsill was the favorite place of the red cat. Рыжего кота. So, the word red, when it comes to fur or it comes to hair, uh, in Russian we say рыжий. It's a common mistake that English speakers make when they translate it somewhere in Google Translate or something. So, рыжий is not like red, like красный, for example. Это красный, это красный. But if somebody's hair is red, we say рыжий, рыжий, like ginger. Um, okay. На фоне затянутого серой дымкой города. So with this background of a city covered with this gray kind of a mist, dimka, dimka, when you can't see clearly, it's called dimka, gray, no, seraya dimka. So with this picture on the background, mandarin smatrelsia asobina effect. Effectно. Effectно. So, he looked really good. Effectно means like stunning. He, will, he caught people's attention. Effectно. So, he produced some effect. Смотрелся особенно эффектно. Uh, then we have speech again. Эй, мандарин! Послышался веселый голос. So this exclamation, hey, in English you usually say hey, in Russian it's hey, like hey, hey. Mandarin, again it's his name, tangerine, tangerine. Because he is red-haired, his nickname is uh, mandarin, tangerine. Послышался веселый голос. Here uh, it's a very common way to use it like that the voice was heard in english it sounds a little bit awkward usually you say active voice voice like mandarin heard the voice in russian it's very common to say the voice was heard 
послышался, послышался. So somebody heard the voice. Uh, веселый means cheerful, cheerful, веселый голос, голос, voice, cheerful voice. So, hey, tangerine, hey, мандарин, ты помнишь, что у тебя скоро день рождения? День рождения. So, ты помнишь, do you remember, ты помнишь, remember what? That your birthday is coming soon. У тебя скоро день рождения. День рождения, we literally say day of birth. Day of birth. У тебя скоро день рождения. You have a birthday soon. Then we have cat thinking again. Хозяина надо воспитывать. This, my master has to be taught. He has to be educated. He has to be well behaved. Хозяина надо воспитывать. Подумал кот. The cat thought. Um, подумал кот, даже не повернув морду. So the cat thought without even turning his face to his master. So, морда, морда. Animals, like dogs, cats, horses, um, we don't say face about them. So what do you say in English about their their faces? So face people have faces. Animals we have the word morda. Morda. For example, dogs like mug, I don't know, face. <laughs> Sabachia morda or cat's face. Kashachia morda. But people have lizo. It's very rude to say that somebody some person has Морда. It's like an insult. If you want to insult somebody, you can say морда. Мерзкая, да? противная, э, уродливая, ugly face. Морда. Um, but for animals, it's not offensive at all, of course. It's just, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so he didn't even turn his face. I should educate my master. Нельзя прерывать ход моих мыслей. He can't interrupt the flow of my thoughts. Нельзя прерывать ход моих мыслей. Flow of my thoughts. Они потом разлетаются в голове, как снежинки. They later fly away, fly around in my head like snowflakes. Они разлетаются в голове, как снежинки. Снежинки. Snowflake in Russian – снежинка. So there is a снег, snow in general, and the little one snowflake is снежинка. Снежинка. Mm -hmm. Мандарин не любил свой день рождения. Мандарин не любил. So, tangerine didn't like his birthday. Here we have past tense. Любить, the infinitive, to love, and not to love, не любить. Past tense, не любил. Мандарин не любил свой день рождения. So, he didn't love, didn't like his birthday. Why? Uh, This is a very difficult construction, like super advanced. Которому был обязан странным на его взгляд именем. So it's translate, it is translated as Tangerine didn't like his birthday because that's how he gained his weird, according kind of, in his opinion, name. So due to this birthday, he has this weird name, Tangerine. So на его взгляд, or you can say на мой взгляд, it means in my opinion, in my point of view, на мой взгляд. So he thinks his name is weird. На его взгляд у него странное имя. Странное имя. Да. Он появился в этом доме 
в канун Нового года. Yes, he appeared in this house at the New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve – канун Нового года. So, the Eve of New Year. That's why we have the genitive case here. Канун чего? The Eve of what? For example, Christmas Eve, we would say канун Рождества. New Year's Eve – канун Нового года. So, yes, he appeared at the New Year's Eve. Yes, he is uh, bright red, ярко-рыжий. Да? да, он ярко-рыжий. Кстати, очень нарядной окраски. So, his bright red uh, colored fur. Uh, but it's not a reason to name him after some weird orange ball with um, uh, шершавый, шершавый. What is the opposite of smooth? Like smooth, but the opposite is like something not smooth. Шершавая кожура. So this is not a reason to name him after some weird little ball with orange, um, not smooth. Peel, peel, кожура. Yes. So, но это не повод. Давать ему имя. Yeah, rough, rough, thank you. Давать ему имя в честь какого-то оранжевого шарика. So, в честь means in the name of someone. For example, the city was named after someone, someone. Or this park was named after some famous person. So in Russian we say называть в честь кого-то or дать имя в честь кого-то. So this red cat was named after the fruit, this little tangerine, because he appeared in the New Year's Eve. And uh, the in Russia this is the main fruit during New Year, mandarin. Everybody eats mandarini on the New Year. Okay, moving on. Дзин, дзин, дзин. По квартире разнеслась трель звонка. Трель звонка. So, ring, 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 I guess. What the, the sound you show, like, ding, ding, like the bell. So, дзин is the sound the bell makes. Ring, ring. Дзинь, дзинь, дзинь. По квартире, in the apartment, in the apartment, по квартире разнеслась, kind of was spread, spreading, going everywhere, everywhere, разнеслась. Трель is this beautiful sound, like тун -тун -тун -тун. we say трель, it's not just звук, not just any sound. For example, birds can make трель. Трель. Um, so here is the трель звонка, ring of the bell. Zin, 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 zin. Mm. Mandarin прислушался. Mandarin or tangerine started to listen carefully. Прислушаться. When you hear something and you try to kind of hear it better. Прислушаться. Прислушаться. Um, so what did he hear? Шаги, скрип двери, голоса. Шаги means footsteps. Some boom, 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 boom. Right now my neighbors are going. They're stomping really loudly. So, шаги, скрип двери. Скрип is this creaking, unpleasant sound. Like... You know, when the door gets bad and you need to put a little bit of oil there, it's like... Скрип. Скрип двери. Голоса. Voices. Remember, we had the word voice on the previous page. Голос. Voice. And here it's plural. Голоса. Голоса. That's what he heard. И тут кот навострил уши. 
навострил уши. Навострить уши, it means like really carefully to listen. It's um, when you hear something unpleasant or you're really trying to, or you are nervous because of what you're hearing and you're getting like really attentive. Навострить уши. Literally, it means to make your ears sharp. Навострить уши. So the cat, yeah, he got nervous and started to listen even more carefully. Навострил уши. До него донесся возмутительный аромат. Аромат, you see it's in quotes, quotation marks. So it means like odor, like this smell. Uh, so he sensed the outrageous odor, like smell. Uh, he smelled something outrageous. Запах котов у которых нет хозяина. So what this odor? It's the smell, the scent of cats who don't have a master, who don't have an owner. Who, so they're basically homeless cats. You see there on the left, homeless cats, street cats, street cats. So this tangerine, he's a home cat. He's well groomed and sleek and everything. Those are like those street bandits cats. They're trying to sneak into his apartment. Запах котов, the scent of cats who don't have a master, у которых нет хозяина. Нет хозяина. Uh, again, we see a genitive case here. When you say there is no something, we say it with genitive case. Нет хозяина. Нет хозяина. Эти бессовестные бродяги в холода захватывали подъезды. So these uh, бессовестные. Совесть is conscious. So when you're kind of thinking about your actions and uh, you are trying to be good, it's the word conscience, like the voice of your conscience. And бессовестный means you don't have any conscience, you are bad. So бессовестный бродяги, these, uh, what's the word for this without conscience? Bad. Бродяги, rogues, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, rogue. Like R-O-U-G-E, I think it is spelled, rogue. Like um, Rogue One, the Star Wars movie. It would be Bradyaga. Bradyaga. Somebody who just wanders the streets, has nowhere to stay. In Russian we call them Bradyaga. Bradyaga. Oh, Rastislav, thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Спасибо. Bradyagi. В холода. In cold weather. When it's cold. When it's cold. В холода. So again, холод is... Um, Cold is um, cold in general, cold, the noun, and the plural is холода, like when it is cold. Uh, so these rogues, they kind of attacked, conquered uh, this public area of the house. I guess for Americans it might be difficult to understand, at least in Amer for Americans in kind of smaller towns who live in houses. In Russia, the buildings are usually multi-apartment complexes. So we have this common area for everybody. Inside the building, there is the post boxes and there is an elevator. So this area where the stairs are, uh, it is called подъезд. подъезд. So back to the whole sentence. Uh, these uh, outrageous rogues, when it was cold, they were attacking the insides of the houses. Подъезды, so they were sneaking into those areas. Uh, and didn't allow uh, the приличный, kind of the proper, <laughs> proper inhabitants, kind of nice inhabitants. Приличный is like this fancy, fancy inhabitants. Uh, even to put you, put their nose outside the door. So not even getting outside the door because of those cats there. 
то они захватывали подъезды, не давая приличным жильцам высунуть нос за дверь. So, Tangerine has to stay, stay at home when those bandits and outrageous street cats are there. So he smelled uh, their scent. Мандарин спрыгнул с подоконника и поспешил в прихожую. So Tangerine jumped off the windowsill, спрыгнул с подоконника. Again, you see a lot of genitive case. So if you had your doubts, if you need to understand and master um, genitive case, here's the proof. Like every single sentence contains a structure with genitive case. So, он спрыгнул с подоконника, he jumped off the windowsill and hurried, rushed into the living room. Поспешил, поспешил. Поспешить, it means to kind of hurry somewhere, to go fast. So, he almost ran into the living room. Поспешил. Mm -hmm. Там приоткрытую дверь заглядывала парочка любопытных кошек. So, приоткрытая дверь. Uh, it's a door that is slightly open. So, not wide open, but there is just a narrow space there. It means приоткрытая. So, a little bit open. Приоткрытая дверь. And into this space a pair of curious cats was sneaking, kind of looking. Парочка, парочка, парочка. Thank you, Alice, for your support. Спасибо, спасибо. Daria, you are the reason I started learning Russian. Oh, I hope you continue. Thank you so much. So, парочка любопытных. Любопытный means curious, when you want to learn something, when you want to kind of find something out, and you look, it means you are любопытный. Парочка means two. Парочка любопытных кошек. Mm -hmm. The next page. Мандарин фыркнул. Пф, фыркнул. И уже собирался пожаловаться хозяину на такую наглость. So, tangerine made this like, I don't know, фыркнуть, it's like the horse sound, like this sound. Or like, like that. So, he kind of snorted, maybe, I don't know how to describe a cat doing this sound. In Russian, we have this um, word фыркать. The verb is фыркать, фыркать. Uh, so he snorted and already wanted to complain to his master. Он собирался пожаловаться. Пожаловаться means to complain, complain, uh, or to whine. Kind of when you don't like something, you're like it means жаловаться. For example, to complain about your life, жаловаться на жизнь, or to complain about something to the police. Жаловаться в полицию. So, it's a very common verb. Жаловаться. Пожаловаться. This по prefix it means like start complaining. So, he wanted to start complaining to his master about this uh, наглость. Again, this kind of outrageous act. So, it was something terrible. Наглость. Но... Тот накинул пальто и вышел, закрыв, а захлопнув за собой дверь. So, here is an interesting way uh, to avoid repetition in Russian. So, you see the first part of the sentence. Tangerine wants to complain to his master. So, in order to not to repeat the word master in the second part of the sentence. We replace it with тот, тот. Literally, it means that one, that one. Тот дом, that house, or тот, um, не знаю, тот город, that city over there. And also, it's the way to replace a noun. So, хозяин, but that 
one kind of but he put on his coat накинул пальто и вышел so the master put on his coat quickly пальто and went out и вышел ушел вышел so he went outside the apartment that's one of the verbs of motions oh, verbs of motion with prefixes ходить идти выходить вышел yeah so it's a verb of motion with prefix we in past tense how complicated is that uh, so он вышел захлопнув за собой дверь and he kind of shut the door slum what's the word slumped slump the door stump the door like loudly when you are kind of yeah loudly shut the door behind him because he's kind of in a rush somewhere so put захват slammed the door thank you so much put захватчиком был отрезан so uh, the way for those conquerors kind of those invaders захватчик is like invader invader so the way for those invaders was cut Again, we have passive voice here. Put был отрезан. The way for the invaders was cut for those street cats. Uh, and tangerine uh, sighed uh, kind of with relief. Mandarin облегченно вздохнул. Like, yeah, облегченно вздохнул. When you're waiting for something bad to happen and it doesn't happen, so you are like, thank goodness, слава богу, да? Облегченно вздохнул. Он остался один. So he was left alone by himself. Он остался один. Наконец, никто не будет отвлекать его от серьезных размышлений. Now he's alone. Finally, наконец, finally, наконец, никто не будет, nobody will. Again, don't forget that in Russian we use double negation. In English it would be no one will not. In English it's considered as a grammatical mistake. In Russian it's double negative, absolutely correct. Mandarin. Mm, So where is it? Никто не будет отвлекать его. So nobody will distract him from his serious thoughts, his very important serious thinking process. Никто не будет отвлекать его от серьезных размышлений, serious thoughts. Для порядка мандарин обошел комнаты, So, to maintain order, now he's kind of the master of the apartment, so to maintain uh, order, для порядка, Tangerine walked around uh, the rooms, so he kind of checked out the rooms, if everything is in order. Обошел комнаты. I hear some cat mewing. Okay, I guess it's a neighbor's cat. Обошел комнаты. Подвигал лапой блюдечко с молоком. So he moved uh, a little plate, uh, plate with milk. Блюдечко. Блюдечко, it's something you put under the tea cup. Like, uh, what is it? What's the word for this little round, beautiful plate? Блюдце. And the small one is блюдечко. Блюдечко с молоком. With milk instrumental case with something с молоком with milk и растянувшись на любимом подоконнике задремал задремал Aaron is asking why I say tea in the name mandarin because I think the fruit is in English isn't it tangerine The little orange one. I thought it's tangerine. So in Russian, it's mandarin. But the whole point of the book is that he's named after that fruit. That's why I'm pronouncing it's like English translation, tangerine. 
in English. In Russian, I call him Mandarin. But the word Mandarin in English, it means different. It's like one of Chinese dialects. So I don't want to confuse you. Mm -hmm. uh, so in Russian, he's Mandarin. Mandarin. Tangerine, Clementine, Mandarin. So is it okay to say Mandarin in English as well? Just referring to that small orange. I think it's tangerine. Yeah, I can just keep saying mandarin, okay? I'll just say mandarin from now on. So, um, okay, so he stretched himself on his favorite windowsill and fell asleep, kind of took a little nap, zadrimal, took a nap. Mm -hmm. Moving on, look at those little Sparrows. I really enjoy the illustrations. If you look at the screen on the right, imagine it's like uh, with oil paints. Look how they show that white on the, like from the snow and frost on the windows, on the glass. It looks so amazing. Huh. Steven, спасибо. Thank you so much for your support. Спасибо. Um, Ух ты! Как интересно! Wow! How interesting! Как интересно! And I really want you to remember this Ух ты! Ух ты! Uh, this is how Russians say wow. Normally, nobody would actually say wow. You can meet it in Russian, wow. But the common way when you see something like you would say, ух ты, ух ты, uh, ух ты. At least in writing, you should use it. Ух ты, ух ты, meaning, wow, как интересно, wow, how interesting. Ух ты, как интересно. It's this little kitten on the right, I guess, it's his, his thoughts. Mm. В это самое время к стеклу подвального окошка Прижался серый с мелкими рыжими пятнышками нос. You see, this is the real level of language. This is like almost like a high quality literature here. A lot of adjectives, metaphors, a lot of interesting verbs. So this, this is not basic. So в это самое время, at this very time, and at this very same time, while Mandarin was minding his business in his apartment, so here, в это самое время, at this very time, к стеклу, Aaron, thank you so much for your support, спасибо, к стеклу, to the glass, dative case, glass is стекло, к стеклу, several cases here. So, к стеклу, to the glass, of the cellar, I think it's called cellar. Cellar, isn't it something under the house? I think it's cellar. Uh, so, to the glass, of the cellar window, серый, gray, basement. What is cellar then? Cellar. Cellar. Mike, what's the difference, basement and cellar? I don't know. So, серый, gray, with little, мелкие, рыжие пятнышки, with little red stains. Um, I guess almost like freckles for people, but this is the cat, so he has those little uh, red uh, stains, spots on his nose, on his nose. So, this nose, gray nose, again, let's just remove, kind of rip rearrange the order. This gray nose with small red spots was pressed to the glass of the uh, ceiling or oh, cellar or basement window. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> very difficult, very difficult. So, эта зима была первой в жизни котенка, и он впервые увидел снег. This winter, это зима, this winter, была первой, was the first one, 
So this winter was the first winter in the life of this kitten. В жизни котенка. В жизни котенка. In kitten's life. And for the first time, he has seen the snow. Он впервые, for the first time, saw the snow. Он впервые увидел снег. Что такое холод и голод, он уже понял. И котенку они совсем не понравились. So what cold and hunger is, or cold and starvation, yeah, cold and starvation is, he already understood. So he already knew what it meant to be hungry and cold. In Russian, uh, you see how similar those words are. The only first letter difference. Холод, cold, and голод, hunger, starving. So when you are hungry, голод. So they are used together very commonly. Холод и голод, about somebody's poor condition. Холод и голод, somebody suffering from cold and uh, starvation. Голод и холод. Uh, so he already understood what they me meant. And he didn't like them at all. Котенку они совсем не понравились. Совсем не понравились. He didn't like their hunger and cold at all. А вот что это белое, пушистое, накрывшее землю? But what is this thing? White, fluffy, covering the the surface, kind of the ground, covering the earth. Белое, пушистое, white and fluffy. Почему на нем остаются следы от лапок суетливых нахальных воробьев? Mm -hmm. So why on this white thing the uh, prints prints of the little paws, little legs of those suitlivy uh, sparrows, sparrows. Suitlivy is someone who moves fast, like tries to do all kinds of things. Suitlivy. So it can be a person who's like, oh, let me make you some tea. What about this? What about that? Kind of moving fast. And we call it suitlivy. Suitlivy. Too much activity. Suitlivy. Nahalni again, it's somebody bold, but in a bad way, kind of nahalni without being, I don't know, I don't know, it's almost like somebody is too rude, kind of getting everywhere just without thinking about other people's comfort, we say nahalni. So that's how the kitten describes the sparrows, that they're moving around all the time and they're kind of just getting what they want everywhere without thinking about others. So, he's thinking, why uh, is it... Um, why is it white thing contains those uh, fo footprints, like paw prints, leg prints? Okay, Adam, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support. Спасибо. Спасибо. We're moving to the next page. Actually, here, give me a second, I, I will move my face to the right because I really enjoy this little kitten picture. Look how amazing he is. I love these illustrations. It's just... Ah. And on the background, you see this man carrying the Christmas tree. The whole atmosphere of this book, I, just, I love it. It's one of my favorites. So, Шажок, еще один... A little step, one more. So we have the word shag, shag for step, and a little step like shazok, shazok. Shazok, еще один. So one step and one more. Котенок боязливо выбрался из подвала на мостовую и начал перебирать лапками. Okay, so the kitten, боязливо means kind of, uh, he's a little scared, so quietly, аккуратно, боязливо, uh, 
So he is scared, but he is curious. That's when we say Bayizliva. So he's a little afraid, but he is doing this. So he crawled out of his basement on the street. Namastavuyu. И начал перебирать лапками. Перебирать means to move fast. So he's like brum, 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 running. His paws are really small and cute. So he's like... Brum, brum. Mm, Hemi is given the timidly. Yes, I would say timidly. Kind of a, is a little shy. He's afraid. Yes, timidly. Боязливо. Боязливо. So he runs. Перебирает лапками. Brrr, как холодно и сыро. How cold and damp. Damp. Холодно. Brrr. So when you are cold, you would say brrr. That's the sound the Russians kind of repre represent when we are cold. Like brrr. Brrr. Холодно и сыро. Cold and uh, damp. Покружившись на месте и оглянувшись на дверь подъезда. So spinning around himself uh, on, the one, on his spot. Покружившись на месте. And looking back. Оглянувшись на дверь подъезда. На дверь подъезда. Котенок решился. The kitten has decided. Решится. To, to make a decision. Котенок решился. Uh, when you are hesitant and... Um, wait a second. Mm. Wait, please. Решится. So when you are afraid of something, but then you are just can jump into it. Uh, it means решится. Решится. Котенок решился. I'll put the bone here again. Котенок решился. Um, so he has decided and... Uh, um, bum, bum. Смело побежал вперед. So bravely ran forward. He rushed forward. So he decided and ran. Смело бросился вперед. Побежал вперед. Может, maybe, может, он найдет что-то более приятное. Maybe he will find something more pleasant. Uh, может, он найдет что-то более приятное, более приятное, more pleasant, uh, than this white and damp thing laying around the ground. Что-то более приятное, чем это белое и мокрое, this white and wet covering all the, the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, then again. Looking at the picture, you understand that he's following this, uh, running after this little red piece of paper. You know how uh, people make toys for cats? They wrap a little uh, string around the piece of paper and the cat's following it. So, нет, не уйдешь, я тебя поймаю. Like, no, you won't go away, I'll catch you. Я тебя поймаю. Поймать means to catch. You're not going away. Не уйдешь, я тебя поймаю. Маленький серый клубочек, не обращая ни на что внимания, пытался схватить шуршащий фантик. So, маленький серый клубочек. Little gray... Mm. Oh, how do you call this thing in English? The woolen, you have wool and it's in the little like ball, and you take a string, one string from there to knit, to knit kind of like ladies, like knitting. My grandmother was knitting all the time, so she had all kinds of those spool, yarn, spool. I've never heard this word. Hmm. So that's how they call this little gray kitten. They don't want to repeat the word kitten all the time. So they're saying, so this little woolen gray thing. Wait, I told you, this is the cat. The, the cat has come. Wait a second. Good morning. Could you
Заходи, малыш. Заходи, да, я тебя покажу. Иди сюда. We have this neighbor's cat. See? <laughs> Every day he just comes to the door. Come. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Just go. He comes to the door, starts mewing, and then he just walks away. Neighbor's cat. He has a little bell on his neck. Oh, Romans love him. So he literally comes to the door, just meow, meow, let me in, and just walks around, and then he goes away. Nice. Yeah. So... Yeah, I wonder if he's going away or not. He's just kind of walked to the room. Cat story. We summoned a real cat to our, <laughs> to our reading session. Uh, yeah, he heard I was reading a story about cat. He's dirty. He like walks all around the place. Now I'm all my pajamas are all covered in dirt. Okay. So that is a Sierry Cot, gray cat. Sierry. Sierry Cot. Where did he go? Котик, ты собираешься уходить? Ты где? He just went to Roman's room. He just, he just said, Может, ты домой пойдешь? I wish I could show him to you uh, by phone, but he's just walking around. <laughs> it says, that is the word, nagly. That's the word nagli, the one who just goes, what, does whatever he wants. That's the perfect depiction of the word nagli. He's just literally walking around the kitchen, touching things with his paws. He doesn't even live here. Okay, now he wants to leave. Give me a second. Okay. Cat, cat has left. Okay, we continue reading about our cat in Russia. Uh, so, Mike suggests the word bold. Bold has this positive connotation when somebody is kind of doing something. He keeps me in. I'm not letting him in. Uh, this is kind of bold in a bad way. So when it's uncomfortable for everybody else, that's the definition of nagli, nagli. Uh, so, okay, where did we stop? This cat completely distracted me and he keeps mewing. Um, yeah, to be up oh yeah, the little woolen kitten rolling around like that ball of wool without paying attention to anything. Не обращая ни на что внимания. Не обращая ни на что внимания. He tried to catch the um, fantic, fantic, fantic. Fantic is what the candies are covered with. Fantic, the wrap, kind of wrap. Uh, fantic. How to say it in English? What do you wrap the candies in? Fantic. Um, so that red thing, what's the word? Mm -hmm. Okay, wrapper, yes, the fantic. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was trying to catch it. Uh, красный, блестящий, лоскут. See how many synonyms we have here. They don't even, they don't say paper, they don't say anything. They say фантик, лоскут. Лоскут means a piece of something, piece of so something. For example, лоскут ткани, piece of fabric. Or like here, лоскут, some piece of, some wrapping. Лоскут uh, словно смеялся над малышом. This little piece of, uh, this little wrapper, as if he w it was laughing at the little... Little one, малыш, малыш, little one. То замирал. Sometimes it froze, it stopped. То быстро бежал вперед. Then suddenly running forward, подскакивая на ходу. Some jumping on its way. So sometimes it stopped, sometimes it's run forward, and sometimes it was jumping. То замирал, то быстро бежал, подскакивая на ходу. Okay, next page. And um, let me again, I wonder where to put my face so I don't interrupt into 
into the pictures. Mm -hmm. So, okay, we're moving on. Oh, we have this mandarin here doing something with his paw. Okay, trying to get back. Oh, whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Yeah, here. So, we'll continue. Вот тебе обиженно сказал котенок и ударил по фантику лапкой. Вот тебе literally means here you go. Вот тебе. When you give something to someone, we say here we go. Greg, thank you so much for your support. I'm sorry I was kind of interrupted, distracted by this cat. Let, let's get back. He's still mewing there. Do you hear him? Let me make the... He's not leaving. He's just mewing at the door. Okay, let, I'll let him in. Because he's kind of sad. Okay. I guess he just wants to stay there and mew. So, all right. Uh, what тебе, again, it's here you go, and that's what you say when you punch someone. Like, here you go, get what you deserve. Вот тебе. So, he taps it with his paw, ударил лапкой. Лапка is a little paw, лапка. He keeps mewing. I'm so, so distracted by it. Ударил лапкой по фантику. That little wrapper was kind of tapped by his paw. Ударил. Тот, again, you see, to avoid repetition, to avoid repeating the word фантик, фантик. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Okay. Yeah, I guess he liked that cat. He comes every day. Comes every day. It's so weird. Um, ducks. Тот, again. Тот, um, meaning the wrapper. So that thing, тот, закружился на месте. Again, was kind of rotating, spinning around uh, on the place, jumped, подпрыгнул, подпрыгнул, and suddenly dived into the open door. Вдруг нырнул в открытую дверь. Нырять means to dive, dive, нырять. So he kind of dived into the open door. Again, it's all metaphors. За ним решил котенок и бросился в догонку. За ним. Uh, like, after him. Let's get him. За ним. After him. Meaning uh, that wrapper, that little piece of cloth or whatever, just piece of paper. За ним. Like, follow him. When you follow somebody, when you are after some someone or something, that's what you say. За ним or за ней, за ними. So the kitten decided and ran after this. Бросился в догонку. Larry is saying, feed him. He's hungry. I don't think it's a good idea to feed neighbors um, animals. I wouldn't want my cat to be fed by random people. I don't know what his diet is. And just it's not a good idea to feed neighbor's cats. And he looks really good, trust me. He doesn't look hungry at all. He just really likes to walk in, just like on the first page Mandarin did, just kind of check if everything is in order, then he just leaves. And so, yeah, don't, don't worry, he's not hungry uh, at all. So, uh, gaff, gaff, that's the sound that dogs make in Russian. The Russian dogs don't say woof woof, don't say bark, they say guff, guff. So the dog is barking guff guff. Страшный звук, scary sound, guff guff, страшный звук, отражаясь от стен подъезда, прокатился по лестничной клетке. So, this scary sound, scary noise, um, reflecting out of the walls, 
kind of resonating, resonating with the walls, отражаясь от стен подъезда. Подъезд, again, remember, it's this public area in the house. So it's the area between different apartments. So some dog is in the main corridor of the building, in the whole, in the public area. So and this dog is barking. Gav, gav. Страшный звук, отражаясь от стен подъезда, прокатился. Катиться. Again, it's a beautiful verb. So just kind of nice way of saying that it just moved around. Прокатиться. So it was, like, woof, woof. It was very loud. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have this in English. Прокатиться. In this metaphoric way. So it's the sound. It kind of went everywhere, rotating all over the place. Котенок в ужасе застыл на мгновение. So the kitten in horror, in terror, in shock, froze for, uh, for a moment. Мгновение. We have the word момент in Russian. Момент. But мгновение is uh, the synonym. The synonym. В ужасе застыл на мгновение. So, horrified. В ужасе. Horrified. Котенок застыл. Horrified kitten froze for a moment. И... This is the... Meow is the sound that cats make. So, he's... So, he froze and then... Meow! Meow! Вихрем влетел в не успевшую закрыться дверь. And like a hurricane, вихр is a very strong wind, almost like a hurricane. So like a hurricane, he flew into the door that kind of had no time to close, like that was almost closed. So the door, it's like, if you imagine it in action, the door was almost kind of closed. There was a tiny spot and he flew there like instantly when he heard the dog barking. So that's what happened <laughs> to this kitten. Закрыться дверь, за которой только что скрылся желанный когда-то фантик. This is super advanced. I'm sure like 99% of people don't understand it, but let's as it's uh, modern uh, and fashionable to say, let's unpack this situation and let's uh, let's talk about separate words so you will understand the whole sentence. So, закрыта дверь, за которой, the door behind which, kind of behind this door, just now, только что, только что, just now, just this very moment, скрылся, was hidden, kind of disappeared, скрылся. Желанный когда-то фантик. Once desired uh, wrapper, like that little red thing, remember? So, rephrase it simply. So, the horrified kitten froze for a moment, then, meow, like a hurricane, he slipped into the door that was almost closed. And behind that door, just now, that desired uh, little uh, wrapper disappeared behind that door. In Russian, again. Котенок в ужасе застыл на мгновение и вихрем влетел в неуспевшую закрыться дверь, за которой только что скрылся желанный когда-то фантик. That is advanced. That is advanced. Um, what's going on here? My screen looks kind of weird. Wait a second. It's whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Okay. Let me put my face away again from here, so it doesn't intervene in those wonderful illustrations. And as you can see on these illustrations, it's not the kind of contemporary story. You see, it's like more than 19th century. See the samovar there, patifon, the one, the, the music, patifon, patifon. Uh, the ink on the table on the left, so the letters, they don't use pens, it's like ink there, really nice. 
beautiful. So I guess it's more like the beginning of the 20th century, probably, before the revolution, because I see they use the old Russian language there on the envelope on the left. It says с Рождеством, but after с we have the hard sign. It's the before the language reform that Lenin made. Okay, uh, so котенок вихрем пронесся по прихожей. Again, this word вихр. So the kitten like a hurricane. Вихрем пронесся по прихожей. Like a hurricane, he moved through the hall through the living room. The hall, I think, is прихожая is the um, kind of place near the entrance. So it's not a room, it's just this kind of near the the door. Прихожая. So like a hurricane, he swooped through it and he ended up in a room. Оказался в комнате. Ended up in the room. Jumped on the chair. Прыгнул на стул, jumped on a chair, вскочил на стол, jumped on the table. You see, we have two synonyms. Прыгнуть, вскочить, вскочить. So if you want to increase your vocabulary, just take this PDF, open the dictionary, and just translate words. And this is just, oh, it's a cradle of amazing, amazing Russian words. Uh, so he jumped on the table. Куда бежать? Где спрятаться? Where to run to? Where to hide? So he is still panicking after hearing the dog barking. Remember, he's still panicking. Он паникует. By the way, wait a little second, please. Uh, I think... Yes, I, I have this feeling. Uh, my computer is about to die. So let me turn on the... Mm -hmm. So the, the battery got really bad. Mm. So yeah, I hope it's better now. Yes, it's charging. So uh, now let's continue. Let me do it full screen again. Uh, view, full screen mode. I don't see it. Yes, full screen mode. I hope you can see it properly now. Uh, dark. Talk, talk, talk. Mm. Is it okay? Yeah, I think it's working now. Sorry for this interruption. So again, like a hurricane, he jumped on the table. Where to run to? Where to hide? Куда бежать? Где спрятаться? И тут suddenly. So you probably know the word тут as here. Here, for example, тут микрофон. Microphone is here. Тут микрофон. Uh, but also when you say и тут, it means and suddenly the cat is here again. Do you have a cat in? I'm so so sad that I'm not doing it from my... Oh, the cat is there. Yeah, just follow me. <laughs> this cat wouldn't leave. It's cold. It is. Let me show him. Oh, so for the people who were worried that this cat is hungry, he is big. He is big. <laughs> he's big. He has this adorable little thing on his neck and he's all sleek. Probably they brush him every day. He looks good. He looks good. He's really interested in that room. I'm worried what he's doing there. He's going there again. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, so, he's definitely not hungry, trust me, he looks good, he looks good. I would like to have a cat like that, oh, but I promised myself that I'd never have a cat again after my evil gray cat from Moscow, he was terrible. Um, okay, so, где спрятаться? И тут, again, it doesn't mean and, it doesn't mean and here, it means uh, and suddenly, suddenly, и тут... You see those three dots there? И тут, suddenly, all of a sudden. And again, some weird sounds there. Вью, вяу, вау. That's definitely not the sound that cats make, but I don't know, maybe it's like, you know that angry cat sound when cats see another cat? They make a 
you know, people who have cats, you probably know this sound, but for some reason, he's destroying the tree. No? For some reason, Кот, котик, иди домой. He's under the tree now. I don't know if you will be able. Whoops! We'll be able to see him there. Probably no. He's under the tree, like a little tree toy. Do you see him? He's doing some stuff under the tree. Oh, I guess he just wants to to stay with us here. Okay, okay. No more distractions. No more distractions. Time to learn Russian. He's going on the... Going on the... <laughs> Cat, time to go home. Time to go home, dude. He has this little bow on the neck. Adorable. <laughs> okay, sorry. So this angry cat noise. Завопил рыжий кот. So завопит, it means this really angry yelling. Завопит, закричать. So завопил рыжий кот. So the red cat, Mandarin cat. Um, oh God, the chat is hilarious pissed on the tree. <laughs> I hope he didn't. I hope he didn't piss under my tree. No, he he's a good, well-behaved cat. So, Mandarin is angry at this little cat, this invasion, is this, this intrusion. So, he yells, завопил, завопил. В изумлении, stunning, kind of being stunned, shocked. В изумлении, в изумлении, уставившись на непрошенного гостя. Lars, thank you so much for your support. Спасибо, спасибо. So, в изумлении, being shocked and stunned. В изумлении. Уставиться means to stare, to glare at something or someone. Уставиться. So, shocked, he just stares at that little cat. На непрошенного гостя. Непрошенный гость means unwanted guest. Uh, it's like when you don't expect any guests, but they come and you have to be polite, but actually you don't want them to be there. We call those guests непрошенный гость. Literally, it means guests that were not asked for. Kind of you never asked them to come, but they came anyway. Непрошенный гость. Then we have more sounds. I, I, ow, wow, wow. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of sound is that. I, ow, wow, wow. That's the kitten noise. Too. Kitten is doing that now. Um, котенок выгнул тощую спинку. So, cat, uh, this kitten... Uh, Oh, the back. How do you call it? Like back. So he just how do, what the cats do it? Like cat's back. Like so he did this to his back. Vignul, vignul, arched. Yes, thank. So he arched his skinny back. Toshuyu spinku, toshuyu spinku, zamitalsya. Started to run around, kind of zamitatsa. When you don't know where to go, you start kind of doing random things. That is called zamitatsa. Mitatsa po kvartire, just running around, not knowing what to do. So that's what happened to the kitten. Zamitalsa. Zamitalsa. I nirnul. Again, remember, dived, but it's more like a metaphor, not like literally diving. Nirnut means like when you can just get somewhere. Nirnut. В напомнившую ему родной подвал темноту под кроватью. Again, the order here is uh, very complicated. So he dived into this darkness under the bed. Нырнул в темноту под кроватью. That reminded him of his uh, 
like motherland, uh, his dear basement. So it's just under the bed, it's just as dark as it was in his basement, in his cellar, remember? So that's why he thought it's safe there, he just ran under the bed. Под кровать, Okay, the next one. Удивленный мандарин спрыгнул со стола и приблизился к кровати. So, surprised mandarin. Удивленный мандарин спрыгнул со стола. So, surprised mandarin jumped off the table. A lot of verbs of motion here. A lot of verbs of motion. So, спрыгнул, приблизился. So, he got closer to the bed. Приблизился к кровати. He came closer to the bed. Но только он попытался заглянуть под нее. Раздался приглушенный писк. Но только, here means as soon as, something, something, но только, что-то, что-то. So, as soon as he tried to look under the bed, как только он попытался заглянуть под нее, to look under the bed, under it, под нее, под кровать. So, as soon as he tried it, uh, he heard uh, some quiet squeaking, like, no, squeaking is a weird sound, it's more like mice, uh, like just kitten mewing, like me, me, pisk, приглушенный pisk, like this quiet, quiet uh, squeaking sound made by this kitten, because he is scared of this big orange red mandarin cat. Uh huh. Uh, so, as soon as he tried to look, he heard this sound. И рыжий кот, red cat, рыжий кот, обеспокоенно, обеспокоенно отпрыгнул. Обес, беспокоиться, it means like nervously, like nervously. He's nervous, so he just jumped away, отпрыгнуть. Again, you see verbs of motion with prefixes, a lot of them here. So, прыгать, to jump. Отпрыгнуть means to jump away from something. So he jumped away from the bed, hearing that noise. Отпрыгнул от кровати. Okay, um, then his thoughts. Ну, хорошо, подождем. Well, all right, let's wait. Хорошо means good, and it means like just mm, okay, all right. Хорошо, подождем. We will wait. It literally means we will wait. Подождем. Let's wait. Uh, решил он и взобрался на книжный шкаф. So he decided, let's wait, he decided, and climbed the bookshelf, книжный шкаф, um, in order for the bed to be in his... Uh, Vision, can I say that in English? Like when something is uh, kind of in your reach, you can see it. In Russian, we say быть в пределах видимости. It, to be in the limits of your seeing. I don't know what's the English version of it. So he sees the bed. Он видит кровать from that bookshelf. С книжного шкафа. Field of view. Yeah, so the bed stays in his field of view. That's why... He wants to kind of be there on the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Чтобы кровать оказалась в пределах видимости. So this field of view, field of vision is пределы видимости. Видимости. It's a very common expression. В пределах видимости. Под ней что-то шуршало, шелестело, шуршало, шелестело, шуршало. You see? This playing with sounds, so it means they are imitating the paper, like sound. So under the bed, uh, something was uh, like doing this noise, making this noise. Those are verbs for this sound. I don't know how to say it in English. So probably the kitten is doing something there. 
и глаза мандарина закрылись сразу же, как только под кроватью все успокоилось. So, and the eyes of mandarin closed instantly as soon as under the bed everything got quiet. Под кроватью все успокоилось. So, everything under the bed got quiet. Успокоилось. Rustling. You say, yeah, like paper doing this like, or the dry leaves falling from the tree, they make this sound like shh. Okay, enough of making weird sounds. Oh, here I definitely need to move my face away, but I don't know where because all the illustrations are really cute. You see that nutcracker on the right? We have a very uh, nice uh, Soviet cartoon dedicated to Nightcracker, and he looks like that on the right. He's not cute at all, the real Nutcracker. <laughs> so, uh, I think in American version he looks way better than the Soviet one. Okay. Oh, just look at those illustrations. Look at those Christmas ornaments on the left. I, I, just, I really wanted to read this book with you because it's just so beautiful. Okay. Мандарин потянулся, открыл глаза и поспешил спрыгнуть со шкафа. So, Mandarin, again, stretched, тянуться, потянуться, it's uh, when you wake up and you're just mm, feeling good, stretching, you know this feeling like, oh, that's what cats like to do when they just wake up, they're stretching, потянуться. Так, мандарин потянулся, opened his eyes, открыл глаза и поспешил спрыгнуть со шкафа. He hurried to jump off the shelf. Поспешил, he hurried up. He kind of rushed to do something. Поспешил спрыгнуть, to jump off, um, off the shelf. В комнате пахло елкой которую хозяин начал наряжать. So, in the room, в комнате, prepositional case here, location, в комнате, пахло елкой. So, in the room, it was smelling of the tree, of the kind of fir tree, pine tree, елка, ель. So, it's this, this tree, Yolka, or that one uh, behind me. In Russian, it's Yolka. Yolka, the one you decorate. Yolka. So the smell of a real tree was in the room, and the master, Hazyain, started to decorate it. Начал наряжать. To decorate a tree means наряжать елку. Uh, people are asking in the chat where to find the pdf pdf is in my telegram channel if you have telegram go to real russian club just search for it in one word or in three words you will find it there is like t.me forward slash real russian club and there is pdf there is pdf if you don't have telegram i highly recommend downloading it downloading it because it's, it's just a great messenger it's completely free it has tons of tools there it's it's just amazing you can find anything there starting with music ending with language lessons completely for free so a really good thing <coughs> okay mm. okay where did we start? Stop. Yeah, so he started to decorate. Начал наряжать. Наряжать. Посмотрим, посмотрим. Промурлыкал мандарин и с головой нырнул в коробку с игрушками. Коробку с игрушками. So, посмотрим, посмотрим means, well, well, let's see. Let's have a look. Посмотрим means, let's see. Let's see. Промурлыкал. Uh, it means like purred mandarin. Like, посмотрим, посмотрим. Kind of nicely. You know, this with pleasure. Like cats, cat manner. Like, посмотрим. Let's have a look. Промурлыкал мандарин. 
and to, with his head he dived into the box with ornaments. Again, remember in my video about my Christmas tree, I told you that in Russian we don't say Christmas decorations, we don't say Christmas ornaments, we call them toys, игрушки. So he dived into the box with ornaments, but in Russian we say коробка с игрушками, but it's not like toys to play, it's toys to decorate the tree, but the word is the same, игрушка, игрушка, коробка с игрушками. Разумеется, of course. So, again, to enrich your vocabulary, you probably know the word конечно. Конечно means of course. Конечно. Like, of course I will go with you. Конечно я пойду с тобой. So, the synonym is разумеется. It's just like of course and obviously. I guess that's the difference. So, in Russian it's the same. Конечно разумеется. Of course, obviously. Oh, так, разумеется. Хозяин специально оставил ее на полу, чтобы его любимец мог немного развлечься. So, of course, the owner of the, of the cat, this master, хозяин, left the box on the floor on purpose. On purpose in Russian means специально, специально, <coughs> специально, kind of especially for him. He left this box. So, любимец, his pet, we usually say pet, любимец. So, his beloved pet, любимец, любимец. It's very common to call pets that way, meaning your beloved, your lovely pet. So he left the box on the floor, оставил коробку на полу, чтобы мандарин мог немного развлечься. So he could entertain himself a little bit, so he could have some fun with Christmas ornaments. Um, ленточки, колокольчики. Mm -hmm. So ленточки are those little, like, confetti, those... Um, strings, I don't know, ленточка, how to translate it, those long, bright things. Колокольчики means little bells, ding, 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 little ones, колокольчики. The big bell would be колокол, somewhere at the top of the church it would be колокол, uh, but the small one, ding, 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 it would be колокольчик, the cat is back. The cat is back. I'm sorry, my friend. Go home. Go home. It's late. He's mewing at my door again. No, no, nobody. Too late now. Uh, okay. Колокольчики, um, and then he sees those round ornaments. Шары, шары. You see that big red one? Шары терпеть не могу. Они похожи на мандарины. So he says. Шары, those ball like round ornaments, the big balls like round decorations. I can't stand them. Терпеть не могу. Can't stand them. They remind me of tangerines. Они похожи на мандарины. They look like tangerines. And remember, he doesn't like his name, tangerine, because his master thought it would be kind of cute to name his cat after this tangerine, mandarin, orange, because he is a red cat. And he came to his house on the new year when people have lots of mandarin, oranges, and tangerines. So he doesn't like them. That's why he says, oh, I don't like those round decorations. Шары терпеть не могу. Can't stand them. Терпеть не могу. Literally means I can't stand them. Can't endure them. Терпеть means to endure. For example, to endure some pain. Терпеть боль. Терпеть боль. Uh, they look like tangerines. Они похожи на мандарины. Похожи means to resemble something. So they resemble me of tangerines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and then he asks the kitten, finally. Mandarin pays attention to the kitten. А ты что тут делаешь? And what are you doing here? Ты что тут делаешь? And you see when you put the 
question mark and exclamation point together. It means like emotional question. А ты что тут делаешь? Серый котенок, прижавшись спинкой к картонной коробке с игрушками, испуганно смотрел на мандарина, боясь даже мяукнуть. So the gray kitten, серый котенок, uh, pressing his back to the carton. Oh, what's wrong with my memory today? Carton, like uh, that hard paper, thick paper. Carton. The boxes are made of it. What's the word in English? Carton. In Russian, we call it carton. So the box uh, would be картонная коробка. Картонная коробка. Um, so the cat was pressing his back to it, and uh, cardboard, I heard the word cardboard, yes, thank you, thank you, cardboard box, картонная коробка, but the word itself in Russian is карton, карton. Um, so, испуганно смотрел на мандарина, so frightened, he was looking, staring at mandarin being afraid again, kind of испуганно. What's the word, like frightfully, no. I'm not sure how to phrase it correctly, it's, it's to keep grammar. испуганно, in a fright, can I say that? So he's afraid and he's looking at him, but we should make an adverb out of it, kind of out of being scared. Uh, frightened, yeah, but in as an adverb adverb like how what answer is the question how how he was i don't know i don't know okay but i, I guess you got the idea so he was scared he was looking at mandarin uh being afraid even to mew боясь даже мяукнуть so he was so scared he didn't even mew мяукнуть мяукнуть боясь даже мяукнуть Mm -hmm. Ну хорошо, будем считать, что ты зашел в гости. Okay, all right. Ну хорошо, будем считать. It means let's consider that you are just have come to visit в гости. To visit someone, we say ходить в гости в гости. So let's consider it as if you are coming to visit us. Будем считать, что ты зашел в гости. Смягчился мандарин. Kind of mandarin softened a little bit. So he's not that strict anymore. So he just softened up a little bit. Смягчился. Смягчился мандарин. Не в силах прогнать малыша. Kind of, не в силах. It means um, he couldn't chase him away. Kind of, he couldn't frighten him away. He didn't want to. So he's just he just couldn't. He's just such a small kitten. So okay, just stay, stay, be my guest. And then he asks, Do you want to eat? Are you hungry? Есть хочешь? Есть хочешь? Котенок едва заметно кивнул. The kitten slightly nodded, like mm -hmm. kind of again timidly. Mm -hmm. Hungry? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. Да, хочу есть. So, едва заметно, barely noticeably, barely noticeably, едва заметно, slightly, mm -hmm. кивнул. Кивать means to nod, кивать, кивнул. И рыжий кот с гордостью начал показывать ему свои владения. So, the red cat with pride, с гордостью, with pride, started to show him his belongings. С радостью, с гордостью начал показывать свои владения. So, what, his possessions, kind of his apartment. Постепенно приближаясь к заветному блюдечку с молоком. So, uh, slowly approaching uh, that, you, I think you said saucer, the one that you put under the cup, saucer, uh, with milk with milk. So he's showing him around and go into that uh, saucer with milk on the floor. 
Uh, by the way, I said about the old Russian language before the revolution style, look at the paper, Vedomosti. So you see it's the old Russian. This is yet there, old letters, they don't exist in Russian, um, in Russian anymore. Interesting. Сегодня бенефис театре ложь судьба. Interesting, interesting to read this old paper. And it's interesting that in old Russian we put uh, the hard sign after the nouns that were ending with um, consonants. We don't do that anymore. But you see there the word teatr, theater, ends with a hard sign. Interesting. Okay, so uh, they're approaching the saucer with milk. Приближаясь к блюдечку с молоком. После сытного обеда мандарин понял, что пришло время познакомить котенка с хозяином. After the fulfilling uh, dinner, после сытного обеда, Mandarin realized that it's time to introduce the kitten to his master. Мандарин понял, что пришло время, the time has come, пришло время познакомить kind of to introduce them to each other. Котенка с хозяином, the kitten and the master. Что ж, один кот хорошо, а два лучше. Well, one cat is good and two cats even better. So, один кот хорошо, два лучше. One cat is good, two cats even better. What a positive, positive man there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Вздохнув, сказал хозяин. After a sigh, like, <sighs> like whatever, okay. Вздохнув, he just kind of signed. <sighs> сказал хозяин. Said, said the owner of the cat, the master. Uh, when his red-haired pet uh, jumped on his knees. Когда... Когда рыжий любимец, again, this word, любимец, like beloved pet, когда рыжий любимец, любимец, запрыгнул, jumped on, so he was on the floor, he jumped on, запрыгнул к нему на колени, knees, колени это knees, на колени, so he jumped onto his knees, uh, and invited a kitten to find his place uh, on the shoulder of a man, of a human, I guess, на плече человека, пригласив, inviting a kitten, пригласив котенка, устроиться, устроиться means kind of to get comfortable, to find some comfortable position there, устроиться, on the shoulder of a human, на плече человека. Котенок преданно ходил за мандарином весь день. So the kitten, преданно means loyally, like loyally. He's loyal, he's loyal to his new friend, his kind of mentor, red cat mentor. So he was following him religiously all day, весь день, all day long. А рыжий кот с удовольствием играл роль гостеприимного хозяина. And the red cat, рыжий кот, with pleasure, с удовольствием, pleasantly, yeah, so he likes it, he enjoys it, played a role of a welcoming host, welcoming host. So, рыжий кот с удовольствием играл роль гостеприимного хозяина. So, he enjoyed being this welcoming host of the place. Uh, so, what exactly did he do? Разрешил, yeah, hospitable, hospitable, yes, hospitable host. Разрешил малышу поиграть клубочком с нитками. So, he allowed the little one to play with that woolen, remember, for knitting, Again, I forgot the word you told me in the chat before. Again, you see the, a lot of repetition here. Mike noted, kind of noted it. It's, it's true. A lot of words are repeating. Uh, so, this woolen 
string kind of made a little ball of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so he led the kitten to play with it. Разрешил котенку поиграть. Объяснил, что поточить коготки можно с задней стороны дивана. That's funny. So he explained, объяснил, that to... What do, how do you call it when they scratched their... Not nails, claws. How do you call it? So, you know, cats, they need to do this stuff and they love doing it on the furniture. So, in Russian, we say tachit kokti. Tachit kokti. Tachit. Tachit kokti. Mm -hmm. Tachit kokti. Retra sharpen claws. Probably, yes. Thank you. Sharpen. Yeah. Like, so, he explained that uh, you can do it on the back side of the sofa or on the back side of the couch so that our master doesn't see it. So it's his special place for sharpening his his uh, claws. Так. Поточить когти можно с задней стороны дивана. There where the master wouldn't see. Там, где хозяин не увидит. Не увидит. The master wouldn't see it there, behind the sofa, behind the couch. Хозяин не увидит. Угостил котенка деликатесами. So he served some delicates. Do you have this word? I know French people do. Not sure about English. Delicates. Something rare and expensive, like something special. Special food. Delicates in Russian. Delicates. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. It must be loud for you. So, what is it? Sour cream, smitana. Sour cream and condensed milk. Condensed milk. Smitana i zgushonim malakom. Instrumental case. So, he served him with sour cream and condensed milk. Smitana i zgushonim malakom. К вечеру мандарин разрешил котенку залезть на подоконник. So, by the evening... By the evening, к вечеру, Mandarin allowed the kitten to climb the windowsill. So it's probably his sacred place. So only in the evening he allowed him, him to join him at the windowsill. Разрешил котенку залезть на подоконник. To climb the windowsill. Together they were observing how the street lights were lit. Они вместе понаблюдали, observe, наблюдать, how uh, street lights, уличные фонари, зажигаются, were lit. So somebody was lighting them. It's not like usually... They were not electrical before. People were actually going, climbing and um, lighting them with fire. Уличные фонари. А в окнах домов то тут, то там вспыхивает свет. And in the windows of the houses, here and there, the light sparkles. So, окнах домов, то тут, то там, means here and there. Here and there, here and there, то тут, то там, то тут, то там. Sparkles is the light, вспыхивает свет. So, they were observing it all, and they fell asleep, kind of mm, snuggling, to one, one another, each other. Снули, прижавшись друг другу. So they kind of sleep like close to each other. Прижавшись друг другу. На следующее утро осмелевший котенок забросал мандарина вопросами. So the next morning, на следующее утро, осмелевший котенок, uh, now brave, so, осмелевший means that now getting brave, now he is bold again. Uh, he threw questions at Mandarin. It means he asked a lot of questions. Забросал вопросами. Literally, it means to throw something at someone. Бросать что-то. 
So he is throwing his questions. Куда уходит хозяин? Почему он не ест вкусную еду, которую кладет нам мисочки? Many, many questions. You know, like little children, they ask a hundred questions. Why is this? Why is that? Почему? Зачем? Куда? Что? Same with this little, little fellow kitten. So, куда уходит хозяин? Where does the master go? Куда уходит хозяин? Why doesn't he eat delicious food that he puts in our saucers, in our little plates? Почему он не ест вкусную еду? Why doesn't he eat our delicious food, like cat food? Зачем посреди комнаты поставили эту колючку в шариках? Why in the middle of the room, посреди комнаты, they put this sharp one, колючка, meaning the Christmas tree. So this sharp thing in, again, in Russian, again, I told you, we call the round ornaments, we call them balls, шарики. So why is the sharp thing with balls is in the middle of the room, колючка в шариках? Можно взять один? May I take one? The one, uh, the red one with a snowflake in the middle. Красненький со снежинкой. And to play a little bit. И поиграть немножко. Mm -hmm. mm. Рыжий кот терпеливо отвечал малышу. So the red cat patiently answered the little one. Терпеливо, patiently отвечал. Хозяин ходит на работу. The master goes to work. Master goes to work. Хозяин ходит на работу. Там ему дают такие бумажки. There they give him special pieces of paper. Special little pieces of paper. На которые можно купить вкусную еду для котов и невкусную для людей. So there... He goes to work, and there they give him the special pieces of paper with uh, which you can buy delicious food for cats and disgusting food for humans. Kind of not delicious for humans. Невкусную для людей. Хозяин не любит кошачий корм. The master doesn't like cat food. Чаще он... Чаще всего он пьет чай. More often than everything else, he drinks tea. This is a completely Russian thing to drink tea. Russians drink tea all the time. Он пьет чай. Колючка называется елка. The sharp thing is called Christmas tree. Елка. Колючка называется елка. Ее принесли домой и украсили, потому что Скоро Новый год. So, it was brought to the house and decorated because the new year is coming. Скоро Новый год. New year is soon. Скоро Новый год. А шарик лучше не трогать. And don't touch that... Uh, no, he says, it's better not to touch. Лучше не трогать. Better not to touch. Лучше не трогать. Шарик that uh, decoration, Christmas decoration. It is made of glass. Он стеклянный. And it might break. Может разбиться. А острым осколком and with a sharp splinter it's uh, easy to harm your paw. Kind of to scratch your paw. Поранить means to wound. To wound your paw. Лапу. Острым осколком with a sharp splinter you can cut your paw. Можно поранить лапу. А что такое Новый год? Заволновался котенок. And what is the new year? The kitten got nervous. Заволновался. Он не сердитый? Isn't he angry? The new year. Isn't he angry? Isn't it that one who said woof yesterday on the stairs? Это не тот, кто сказал гав вчера на лестнице. Remember, he heard the dog barking and got really scared. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice again after speaking for so much, for so long. Когда он придет? When will he come? The new year. So he's asking again tons of questions. 
Мандарин чувствовал, что устал от бесконечных вопросов, но сдержал раздражение и ответил. So Mandarin felt that he is tired from endless questions. Бесконечные вопросы. Endless. Бесконечные. But he restrained his irritation, kind of, he held his irritation and answered. Сдержал раздражение и ответил. And replied. Don't be scared, little one. Не бойся, малыш. The new year will come tonight. Today's evening, he actually says. Новый год придет сегодня вечером. In the evening, today. Сегодня вечером. And you will see everything yourself. И ты сам все увидишь. You'll see everything yourself. Сам все увидишь. А вечером дом наполнился людьми. By the evening, in the evening, the house was full of people. Дом наполнился людьми, которые смеялись, говорили без умолку, взрывали хлопушки и зажигали бенгальские огни. So, people were laughing, смеялись, говорили без умолку. It literally means to talk without stopping, kind of non-stop talking, blah, 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 talking, talking, без умолку, we say in Russian, uh, взрывали хлопушки, popped up those, poof, what's the word, хлопушки, and uh, lit those бенгальские огни, those sparkling things, I don't know how do you call them in English, in Russian we always do this, like, poof, I don't know how to translate it, never heard this word in English, in Russian it's бенгальские огни, Mm. Ах, какой симпатичный. Like, ah, oh, what a cute one. Ой, какой крошечный. What a tiny one. So they're looking at the kitten like, oh, he's so cute, you little baby. Uh, бедняжечка, как тяжело ему пришлось на улице. It means, oh, my poor little one, how uh, difficult it was for you on the street. How difficult. How hard you've been living on the street. Мандаринчик, ты же присмотришь за малышом. So little mandarin, will you look after the little one? So lovely mandarin, мандаринчик, will you take care of the little fellow? Присмотришь, so присмотреть means to look after someone, to take care of someone. Oh, the illustrations are absolutely incredible. Just look on the left. Look at how wonderfully the tree is decorated and how the eyes of the kitten are all sparkling. Again, it's all painted with oil paints. It's so crazy beautiful. Гости передавали котенка из рук в руки. So guests were handing uh, the kitten to one another. From one hands to another one's hands, kind of из рук в руки, from hands to hands. Целовали его в носик, were kissing him into his nose. Целовали в носик, нос, nose, and the little nose, носик. Гладили по шерстке, so were patting him, kind of gliding, I don't know, his little fur, kind of caressing his fur. Мандарин с ревностью смотрел на всеобщее веселье. Мандарин started to feel jealous. And Mandarin with jealousy was observing the uh, kind of celebration. Всеобщее веселье. Всеобщее веселье. Но тут котенок, которого наконец отпустили на пол, запутался в разбросанных разноцветных бумажных ленточках. So, Mandarin got jealous already, and then the kitten, котенок, uh, that was put on the floor finally, которого наконец опустили на пол, put on the floor, he got stuck into those long uh, paper strings, you know, the ones that fall off the pop-ups, like poof, and it goes on the floor, like confetti and the long paper spirals. So he got stuck in them. Запутался, запутался. Uh, and somebody says, а давайте назовем его серпантином. And let's call him serpentine. I don't know, do you have this word, serpentine? Those long 
serpentin. You know, the road can be serpentine when it's like that. And those paper strings are called serpentine. So some creative guest, probably the one who suggested to call Mandarin last year, comparing him to Mandarin now, she or he suggests serpentine to, to the kitten. And everybody laughs. Все засмеялись. А все-таки у меня прекрасное имя. After all, I have a wonderful name. Прекрасное имя. Задумчиво сказ произнес мандарин. Mandarin uh, kind of sad after thinking. So finally, compared to serpentine, uh, I guess he finally understands that his name is not that bad after all. Somebody now has even worse, serpentine. So finally, he enjoys his name, mandarin. Uh, и обернувшись к котенку, котенку строго сказал, серпантин, уже поздно, малышам пора спать. So looking back to the kitten, he strictly said, like serpentine, it's late, little ones have to go to sleep. So Mandarin has his parenting feeling now, after all, he's kind of looking after this kitten, so he's all grown up and strict. It's late. Уже поздно. Малышам пора спать. So that is the end of this wonderful, wonderful book. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me go back to... Whew, I literally almost lost my voice, to be honest with you. So uh, I wanted to read this book for like three years with you and every time something stood on my way it was too late this year i almost thought again like ah it's kind of two weeks after new year maybe it's too late for this but then i said no i it's just i love this book so much i really want to share those wonderful beautiful illustrations with you so today i quickly made a pdf of it so you can enjoy and this is a great way to expand your vocabulary and again even if grammatically it is beyond your level and i guess for most people it is way beyond your level of russian but it's a great source of wonderful words that you can use in the future or even use now maybe so seriously just download this pdf and uh, just open the dictionary and work on this book with yourself it's just a pleasure to work with it print it out and um, just underline the words look them up try to read them because it's such a pleasant experience just to do it with those illustrations especially somewhere if you still have a tree like i do in the evening just sit down next to it just, it's just so wonderful i don't know i guess i'm getting old <laughs> appreciating these uh these uh, weird activities like underlining words and looking at christmas and new year illustrations yeah suddenly appreciating all all of this mm. okay that's been a long russian lesson i really hope you enjoyed it and uh, again yeah join telegram you can uh, download pdf there so thank you very much unfortunately i'm yeah if i stay longer i will lose my voice completely so next week we are reading those books i showed to you uh the author sent them to me so i can read them with you about uh, a boy in the zoo something like that that's a really nice book so we'll uh, we'll read them okay that's it thank you very very much thank you very much for your support i truly appreciate it And uh, I hope to see you next week. So, спасибо, с Новым Годом, Happy New Year, and пока-пока, uh, до свидания, пока.